put your hands together and tell the Lord, thank you. Stand to your feet. If you've got two good feet, stand on them and tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, your name is holy. It sounds like church in here. It feels like church. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, Lord, you are holy. Angels bow before you in heaven and earth before you. Lord, you are holy. Thank you, Jesus. Open up that door, sir, and let those people come in, please. Open the door, sir, please, and let the people in. Oh, Lord, put your hands together and tell the Lord, thank you. 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 Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Put your hands together and tell the Lord. Open your mouth up and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Could have been Monday that something happened, but but you kept me Tuesday, God, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, all day Saturday, and you woke me up this morning, God, and started me on my way. And uh, in this house of worship, I'm not gonna stand here quiet. I'm gonna put out my hands. I, I can't hold back. I, I gotta tell you, thank you. You've been good to me. 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 Hey, I, I can't be quiet, God. I, I can't be quiet, God. They say the rock will cry out. And I can't cry, cry for me, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. some experiences and through all of those experiences we have made it do you know that do you know that even the stuff that you went through just on yesterday you made it through do you know that do you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side Opening some roads up, closing some roads up, bringing you people to bless you, taking away people that you don't need. All right, so there's a responsibility of the redeemed to say something, right? The scriptures say, let the redeemed say so. Who he has redeemed in trouble. If you have been redeemed, you got to stand on your feet and tell the Lord, thank you. If you've ever been in trouble and God delivered you, this is your opportunity to say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let us pray. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Coming in, I need you. I need you going out. I need you got on the mountaintop and I need you down in the valley. I need you in my home and at my school, at my job. We need you. So right now we thank you, God, that you have never left us. Thank you for your internal presence, God. You are always with us. 
God, we don't take it lightly that you have allowed us to assemble in the house of prayer and praise. And for that, God, we say thank you. Now, God, there are some things that need to be fixed. God, you fix it, please. We've tried to fix it ourselves. And the fact of the matter is that it's still broken. So we come today, God, asking you, please fix it, Jesus. There's some healing that needs to take place in the house, oh God. So we gather with one collective voice and say, God, send your healing in this place. There's some deliverance, God. Please send your delivering power. God, we don't want to come and leave the same way. Thank you, God, now for your presence. Thank you for your power, God. Thank you for your strength, God. Thank you for your affirmations, God. We are your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. feel good because now it's time to stand for the reading of the word of God. This is the second Sunday. It's our workout Sunday. So pretend that was a squat. You did your first squat. You sat down and up. Down and up. Please join me in the reading of the scripture book. The book we are going to is the gospel according to Luke. Luke, the fourth chapter. And we will I will read verses 31 through 36 if you would join me by reading along. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible, NIV. Luke in the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 31 through 36. Hear the word. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath, he taught the people. They were amazed at his teachings because his words had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Then the demons threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What words are these? With authority and a power, he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. He gives orders to impure spirits and they come out and they come out amen the word of god for the people of god you may be seated amen amen hallelujah hallelujah it is time for us to give benevolently and we do have our ushers that will come forth and pass the baskets. And I just want to remind you at this time to give from your heart. Be reminded of the goodness and grace of God. And as the choir just sings a song lightly for us, something we could think about, maybe just thanking God. Maybe let's all sing together, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know you can give via cash at Venmo, give them the five, but we also have someone standing to accept your card and you can swipe your benevolent offering here. Amen. that it does what it shall do for your kingdom, for your people, in your way. And we say thank you all together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just love beautiful directions. God gives us directions and mercy every single day to follow. And I even more importantly love a pastor husband that gives me directions. But today is your birthday, so you have to stay seated and leave your directions in your pocket. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just get your mind focused on the fact that you will be delivering a great sermon to us later on. And other than that, we will just show up, show out, and celebrate you. Amen. So I had to stay in front of everybody so he try to, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I do want to recognize the fact that we are celebrating, we are celebrating people that were married in the month of January. Yes, indeed. Last Sunday we celebrated birthdays, but there are people that were married in the month of January. And those that I do have recorded none other than our sister beloved mr and mrs keith and robin crawford so if you know her clap it up for her they were married on the first the second day of january on the 13th of january which was yesterday we have the rainers amen they were married on january the 13th January the 15th, we have none other than Charles and Reverend Dana Spencer. Amen. Their anniversary is on tomorrow. So 
So we like for them to come up front real quickly. And we also have the throwers. They'll be celebrating 63 years. 63 years on January 31st. And though they're in Southern Cal, they still participate in a lot of the activities that we do have here at Fame. So now Reverend Smith, Dr. Roddy, you may come forward. You can come up now. And we just wanted to salute. We starting off in our salute to you too. We know that God has something special for your life. We pray that God continues to uphold you, anoint you, and give you everything you need. Give you everything you need. May God continue to keep you molded together as a couple so you can continue on this race. So you can smile and you can hop and jump as much activity as you have in your limbs that you have enough strength to keep on going. It is not easy, but it's worth it. Matter of fact, let's change that it is not easy and proclaim that it is easier and it gets better and better and better with time. So now look at your sweetheart and we're going to hear a proclamation from your past. <laughs> Dear love, I pray that God will continue to bless our union that we may be love, giving it, sharing it, and experiencing it. Now, God, we pray that you bless this union that you have put together. May they forever be binded in your love and in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on and give God a hand of prayer. Also, if you are going with the Merrick Ministry, we are going to Chevy's today at 2 p.m. If you have not, so mm -mm. directly after service, amen, hallelujah. So it's not 2. If you come at 2, you're going to miss it because we're going to be going watching the uh, games. Well, I'm not, but nevertheless, amen, amen. I also have another announcement. In particular, we want to highlight that something is coming up special. Something is coming up special. And what is coming up special for us? The Up From The Ashes Experience. Amen? Amen? And we want to make sure that we show up and show out. So on behalf of the committee, on behalf of the stewards, the trustees, the laity, everybody that is working to make certain that this is an amazing experience. I pray, I pray that you show up and show out. I also pray that you know that we have amazing sponsors in the likes of Block, PG&E, AT&T, Radius Recycling, Oakland Roots, Supervisor Keith Carson, and it, that's just the list for now. The sponsors will keep coming and coming and the people will keep coming and coming. So do you have your ticket? Whether you VIP or general member, do you have your ticket? I was so excited that on yesterday, I was just standing in church and somebody said, Reverend T, will you help me buy my ticket right now? I'm not going to tell you who it was, but it was so excited that we walked through the purchase of those tickets right there and then. It felt so good, amen, that people are saying, I'm coming and I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out. So will you be there? Will you? there. Also, also, Pastor has some hard tickets. That means tickets that we can touch and hold, and he will give us further information on those tickets as he comes up. I guess he looked at me and said, I'm making that announcement. Amen. I love him, but I'm just saying. He said, I'm going to make that announcement. So, right now, we will have a special presentation if you're a part of the special presentation by the young people, will you please come up at this time? Amen. Amen. So as they are coming forward, we want to remind you that we will have a light celebration after service to celebrate our dearly beloved pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Um, this is from the CCYB, I mean, thing YB. P is for pasta. A is for a manual. S is for smart. T is for teaching. O is for outstanding. R is for rock. I was asked to write a poem for our pastor. Something short, and so I felt flattered that Reverend T had asked me to write a poem. But I didn't know what to write. How do you explain in a few words how impactful something has been in so many people's lives? So I stand here today giving it my best shot and saying happy birthday, Pastor, and thank you for every blessing that you've brought. The Bible teaches us to have faith in our works, and you've truly shown your faith, because when times are tough, or as you would say, when change was strange and when money was funny, <laughs> you'd, always, you'd always put your faith in God and knew things would work out for us. I've seen a big growth in our church, and I'm so excited to see what we're wanting to do next. So I pray that God continues to lead you down the righteous right path, and that you remember to not become weary in doing what pleases the Lord, because you'll soon reap a harvest if you do not lose sight of doing good. We just want you to know how much we love you, how much we're grateful for your support, and we just wanted to say happy birthday on behalf of you. Hey, man, so they're going to give you another extra special happy birthday song. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. other than yourself on tomorrow on tomorrow God say the same do something we know a mighty man lives the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. so we salute you pastor the Reverend Dr. Rodney D. Smith and Katie is also born on January 15th so that is a special 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 day so we salute you. We won't get into everything else that happened on January 15th, because we're going to just keep it like that, okay? Hallelujah. Nevertheless, we like to recognize now any visitors or any people that 
have decided to say, I'm going to drop by and hang out with fame. And I know my name is not yet on the roll, but I'm checking you out. Or I just came with my sister, my cousin, or my uncle. If you are here, you may stand at this time. And if you're not, just take a small opportunity to smile at those people that are here. Give a high five or a fist bump or something to somebody else in the audience during this time. Amen. Hallelujah. And we do have a family. Look at God. Amen, amen, amen. Let's clap for this beautiful family. God is so good. As you go to your seat, will you please give us your name if you like? Yeah, my name is uh, Brian Walker. My wife, Claudia. My son, he's got an hour and uh, Brian The Walker family. Amen. We do realize you could have went any other place, but we welcome you here to fame. I know that God is smiling on your life because I see the goodness and grace that is on upon your beautiful family. So we welcome you today. And if there's anything I can do or any other member, please feel free to let us know you are truly welcome. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. It's good to see people welcome in this place. Now it is giving time. It is time where we give our tithes and offering. Press down just a little more because God has given so much to us. When's the last time you looked in your refrigerator and you saw something to eat? When's the last time you went outside and you had clothes to wear? As I look, everyone in here is clothed. So now we will give our tithe and offering. And remember that a tithe is 10% of that which you earn. Amen. You can go above and beyond that, but we pray that you go ahead and allow yourself to give. And what we're going to do is make certain that you have some giving music and we're going to allow you to walk down and give. There will be two people holding baskets in front. All you have to do is make certain that you put your offering in the baskets. Amen. The ushers will direct you. Hallelujah. Give on Givelify, Cash App, or Venmo as well.
better self told me to save my energy so I didn't do no push-ups or jumping jacks this morning. But the way I feel because of what God has done for me. You know, sometimes we tell ourselves, well, I just want to get out. I got stuff to do. But if you look back over your life and think things over, all of my good days,
the youth is dismissed for Children's Church at this time. Hallelujah. I won't complain. I can't complain. Song says I had some good days. I had some bad. I had some hills to climb. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. I won't. You see, God has been so good to me. God has been so good to you. So we don't even have room to complain. All we have room to do is say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When my body is hurting, thank you, Lord. When I can barely get out the bed, thank you, Lord. When my mama don't call me, thank you, Lord. When the divorce happens, thank you, Lord. When you don't have money in a bank account, thank you, Lord. All of my bad days don't even matter because the good ones came when I graduated college. Thank you, Lord. When your children didn't end up on the street, thank you, Lord. You have food to eat, thank you, Lord. Your good days are waiting.
last week we were praying for Reverend Mitchell who was in the hospital. Amen. And he is in service this morning. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Amen. The announcements have been given. I just want to give one uh, an additional announcement. I want to thank you, Faye. We are we are uh, 
just about sold out, just about sold out of the VIP tickets. Um, so if you were planning to be VIP, this is probably going to be your last day or week. There are only a few more VIP seats left. But look at your neighbor and say, however, there's a whole bunch of general admission tickets. And here's what I like to do. I, I know some of you have already uh, purchased uh, more than five tickets. Hear me good. Expect the officers. We're asking uh, every officer of the church to try to help us sell at least five. Somebody say five. Five. General admission tickets, which is a different price than VIP. And um, we we got you. Look at you never say, we got you. We, we have your envelope and your tickets ready to give to you today, uh, to the congregation. Um, we, we need your help. We want to make sure that we have a good showing. This is the kickoff to our capital campaign and really the kickoff for us telling the world that although the fire burned the building down, the church is getting stronger and we have a vision. Somebody say amen. amen. So please, ma'am, please, sir, you don't have to be an officer. I'm asking every member of the church, try, just try. You, you can write down five people who you know can get five general admissions tickets. If fame does its part, we're more than halfway at our goal. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you to do your part. Now, if you're going to try, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. If you're going to get an envelope, come on, let me. I need to see some more hands. Whoa. All right. So we'll see you at the end of service. With that being said, I sent this to the ministerial staff, and I'm going to definitely try to be more intentional, very more intentional in this season. Second Sunday, the reason that we have on this these workout clothes and, and our laid back Sunday is not for us to be laid back. It's really for us to make a statement about being more intentional about our mental and physical health. Amen. Too often African Americans are at the very top of the list when it comes to heart disease, hypertension, and most importantly, obesity. And we have to do a better job and how we eat, how we live, how we interact with one another. And I was telling Reverend Spencer in the back, I, I, would, I would almost be a pescatarian if it wasn't for that daggone bird. <laughs> God almighty, I mean, I'm almost there. It's just that I ain't been able to get over that fried chicken yet, Reverend. <laughs> but, but I know that God's word teaches me that this is my temple. Amen. This is my temple and I ain't getting another one. Now hear me. We have to do a better job at how we eat. Amen. Our stress levels. Big Pharma doesn't want you healthy. Because as long as you're healthy, they're not making money. And if we were to take a poll in this church to how much we spend on medication, you would be shocked. But as you do the groundwork and you do the studying yourself, you have to believe that there is nothing that cannot be fixed from a body that God created. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You got to believe that there is nothing that cannot be fixed from a body God made. Now, I know I just heard you. Somebody just said, but pastor, they said there is no cure for this cancer. They, they said this is this. is this. Then you be the first to overcome what man says cannot be overcome. Because as a believer, I can't believe that God doesn't have the power to turn it around. Now, it's his choice whether he turns it around. But you got to do your part to make sure you do everything possible to make sure that you are around here in good health. Somebody just holler out good health. Yeah. Let us bow and pray, Father God, that today something will be said, heard, that will make us better. Better. Better as a people come to Christ, that we'll make different decisions. I'm asking God that you take the emotion out of this real moment. 
and help me to hear what it is that you have to say. And that makes me emotional, God, then so be it. But let my attention be focused on this word because this is the most critical moment in my life. Because I know, God, you want to give me revelation. I know you want to give me clarity. I know you want to give me the idea that's going to take my life to another level. So do, God, what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, those of you who are able to stand, let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 31. When you get there, shout out, I got it. All right, nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor. We're going to pay attention together. <laughs> All right. Keep your neighbor keep your neighbor with me this morning. Amen. We're going to pay attention. Look at these two right here. Look at that. I got my eyes on. <laughs> I ain't looking at nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Luke chapter 4. All right. Let's look at verse 31. Then he went down to Capernaum a town in Galilee. And on the Sabbath, okay, so this is worship, this is Sunday, he taught the people. And they were amazed at his teaching. I need you to underline this. Because his words had authority. Circle that. We'll come back to that. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. Where was the man? See, I'm making sure y'all pay attention. Where was the man? Look at your neighbor and say, he was at church. And what kind of spirit did he bring with him to church? Everybody look up real quick. Just because you in church don't mean that you got alternative motives. Just because you call yourself Christian and a good abiding citizen, it is very possible that there's somebody here this morning that ain't got a clean spirit. Watch this. He cried out at the top of his voice. Go away. What do you want? Watch this. With us. He didn't say with me. He said us. I need you to catch this. Because unclean spirits are cancers. They don't want to just take you out. They want to take everything that's connected to you out. That's why he used the word us. All right? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? Now, why are you using the word us if you're in this unclean man? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Isn't it interesting that every hater knows who you are? <laughs> Watch what Jesus says. It's in red. Be quiet. But he said it sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them and all came out without injury. So he was possessed. He had a lot in him. Look at your neck. He had a whole bunch going on. And, you know, all the people were amazed. And, you know, every time Jesus does something, then they start talking. You know, who gave you authority? You know, all this stuff, right? Um, this, this morning, it, it is important that you understand. It's very important that you understand. As I preach from this subject, keep your spirit up. Keep your spirit up. Your spirit up. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, there are forces that have been set before the sun rose this morning that their sole purpose was to attack your spirit. The word of God, the word of the Lord says that the enemy does not rest. And the enemy's job, some of us think, is to attack us physically. That ain't how the enemy comes. The enemy comes to attack your spirit. Why? 
Because your spirit controls your mood. What do you say? I'm in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood. When you say I'm in a bad mood, what are you really saying? My spirit is what? Not right. When you say I'm in a good mood, what are you saying? My spirit is? My spirit is right. The biggest or the greatest challenge we have are not the physical things. Flesh and blood, right? I wrestle with that. But, but I can overcome my flesh, right? How can I overcome my flesh? Well, number one, I can, instead of, I want, every, I want us to be mature in this church. Anybody who's in this church, who's a member of this church, I want you to stop going on a diet. Stay with me. Stop going on a diet. When you go on a diet, you set a course and a timeline psychologically in your mind that you will begin something and you will end something. The reason that many of us have tried diets and they don't work is because psychologically we are defeated because the very thought of you saying that you're going on a diet, you program yourself that you're only going to do this for a short period of time. <laughs> Preach boy, I think I will. <laughs> What we should declare is I'm going to make lifestyle changes. <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you that in your house, every product that you have, you support a billion dollar company? Show of hands, how many of you have stock and catch up? Raise your hand. One, two, you got stock and ketchup? No? I know you have stock and ketchup. You got stock and ketchup, one person. All right, show of hands, those of you watching online, how many of you have ketchup in your house? Raise your hand. You see where I'm going? We invest in things that we are not invested and so before the sun has come up, ketchup is marketing to you because you can't eat a hot dog without. Y'all better talk to me in here. Program, right? That's just a small example of where I'm going that when we start in this text, the Bible says that Jesus is coming to this town called Capernaum. Now you gotta understand something about Capernaum. Capernaum was a lot like Oakland, especially about 50 years ago when African American people, well about 75 years ago when African American people really started, in the 1940s is when the majority of the migration to the Bay Area started. And a lot of African Americans came here to work what we call Jack London Square, right? Labor, right? because you can find a job, you can find affordable house, right? But this is how blacks started migrating out of the city is because somebody told you, I'll give you cash for your house. And turned around uh, the houses that your parents bought. Most of our parents who were in that baby boomer generation, you were able to buy a house uh, for $20,000. Can y'all believe that? If you put those houses in San Francisco on the market today, they would be worth 1.2, 1.3. Somebody gave you a handshake and thank you for your business and gave you $100,000 and you think you did something. And in two years, all of the money was gone. Because we have not invested in our spirit and understanding that any movement that has ever happened it never happens without people who don't have like-minded spirits. That's why you can walk into any room and you know by what you feel, uh-uh, something ain't right. Show me hands, how many of you uh, are married? Let me see your hands, all the married people, all right? Those of you who got your hands up, can y'all remember before you married your boo who you sitting next to this morning? 
and you went out on that date, and the Spirit said, he looked good, but that ain't the one. <laughs> she fine, but she ain't it. How did you know that? Your spirit. I mean, you have children. Raise your hand. All right? And now, women, y'all are good at this. I mean, y'all just got this thing where they call it a woman's intuition. Amen. I, I never forget one time, my mama wasn't even home and called me and said, boy, what's wrong with you? How do you know that? Something I can feel. It's something in me that makes me know that God is real. Now, how many of you praised God this morning before you got to church? Let me see your hands. Amen. Bless you. Because, because every moment you have, amen, to give God praise, you ought to give God praise because you recognize that I'm only here because of the Spirit of God. I hear you. But where is he? I can't, I can't put my hand on him, but it's that three of y'all that can say, but I feel him. But how, how do you feel him? When you feel God, and all of a sudden you be standing up and you don't even know why you're standing up. You driving to work with tears in your eyes and you don't even know why you crying. Has anybody ever asked you what's wrong with you and you could not articulate them to them? I'm not mad at nobody. I'm not sad. I'm just grateful that the Lord gave me another day. So Jesus is in Oakland. I mean, Caprini. And it's a town near San Francisco. I mean, Galilee. And on the Sabbath, he taught at the church called Fame. Watch this. And they were amazed at his teaching. Why, Pastor? Because his words had authority. Yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Your words have authority. Well, Pastor, I'm broken. I've been praying that God will bless me and give me uh, the fruit of my labor. But yet you spend six days a week going to the stores and say, ooh, that costs too much. Right. I can't hear nobody. That's what you spoke. I ain't gonna never be afford, I ain't gonna ever be able to afford this. I'm gonna have to get five jobs before I can move in this house. Who told you that? Why do you believe that? Why are you of the mindset that God can, can't do anything? We come to church and say God can do anything, and then yet we live six days of the week like God can't do nothing. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. We come to church for two hours, and we pray, we praise, we say God can do anything, and then on Monday, we get to the gas station and say, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this gas. Where are you going, Pastor? The Lord says, the Bible says, that the people were amazed because Jesus was teaching in church and the word says his words had authority. Now I got to deal with this word authority. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to deal with this authority. And do you know that the word authority is the power or the right to give orders? If you can't give orders, you ain't got no power. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. If you spend all of your life being told what to do, and you don't tell nothing in your life what to do, you have no power. And when you live a life of no power, you are subject to what is called random acts of life. I don't speak nothing on my life. I don't speak over my life. I don't speak the things over my life. So I have to accept what shows up. I have no authority. But the Bible says they were amazed because he understood there is power in my words. Right? So if you want something to change, you have to make sure that your spirit is right because your spirit can never speak but, but where there are no words in your, in your heart. In other words, you can't fake you. You can only fake others. I just said so. You can't fake you. 
You know good and well that you got to make some changes. You can make others think that you already made them. You know good and well you broke. You can make other folk think you got money. You can't say amen and say ouch. So you can't fake you out. You know the truth about you. You know how you know the truth about you? Because you went to bed with you last night. And guess what? You woke up with you this morning. You know about you. Look at your neighbor and say, you think you know me, but you don't know me like I know me. And because you know you so much, you already know you cannot fake it to you. Because you know the truth about you. But then if you know the truth about you, then you should know then that you have no authority unless you have no real power until you obtain authority. Now, before you get this authority, you got to check something. Y'all ready? You got to check your spirit. Because if your spirit ain't right, your words ain't going to be right. You ever ran in across somebody that was high in spirits? Raise your hand if you know somebody that's high in spirit. High, just happy to be alive. How do they talk? Do they talk like they down and out? Do they talk mean and nasty? Do they talk like they don't know God is going to make a way? I love people who have assurance and understanding about the authority that is in them because God's word says he's given me the power to speak some stuff over my life. Now, here is the challenge is why I told you to never go on a diet. Fake people are always on a diet. They have a beginning and they have an ending. I'm looking for folk to be in my life who are committed to lifestyle changes. I'm nice and that's my lifestyle. Amen, somebody. I give and that's my lifestyle. There's some folk who want to give when there's when the camera's on, when they want to be seen. Some, the Bible talks about some folk pray when they want to be seen. But I want to know, do you pray like that when you're by yourself? Do you smile like that when you're by yourself? Do you give like that when you're by yourself? When nobody is looking, how do you act when somebody cuts you off? Y'all ain't talking in here. How, who are you when the, when the cash register, you gave them a 50 and you bought something for $5 and they give you uh, $38? Do you cuss them out when ain't nobody looking? Stop, get off your diet, and let's get on a lifestyle. Because lifestyle is how you change. Lifestyle is, is what makes you unique. I'm going to show you in the text what Jesus does to this man who is possessed by an evil spirit. And, and let me let y'all know something right now. Everybody who smiles in, they, in your face ain't for you. It's a whole lot of folk that can't stand you and ain't got nothing to do with you. It's your spirit. See, you think they want what you got. Boo, they don't want what you got. They can go steal that. They bipping cars, bop, I don't even know. They made up. I didn't know what a bip was. True story. We, we were we were celebrating. Sister Haskins' birthday. Was it last Sunday? Yeah. Last Sunday. Now, the police officer is standing right in the car and halfway cuts the man off. Like, I don't want to get involved with that. And you know what that told me was? We out here on our own, y'all. Yeah. And if you wake up and God gives you a day of life and you wake up with the wrong spirit, do you realize that can mess some stuff up? Can you imagine coming to church with the wrong spirit and God got you didn't check your spirit when you got up this morning? You showed up with a nasty attitude, ready to get somebody told, ready to tell somebody off, ready to speak your mind. Wait till I tell the pastor what he should have said. And you don't know I got a blessing with your name on it. Now you didn't told me the wrong thing, I didn't tip my blessing in my pocket. 
But every single day, God gives us an opportunity to came into the sanctuary with the right spirit, with your spirit high because you were grateful that God gave you another day. What if we showed up to our jobs and our families and our relationships, not talking about what somebody didn't do for you, but what do you bring to every single relationship that you're in? If you have broken things going on around you, it's not that other people are broken, it's that you come with a broken spirit yourself. Somebody just holler out, Lord, fix my spirit. Let's look at the text. Jesus is in the synagogue, and there was a man possessed by a demon and an impure spirit. Listen here, fame. Demons also come to church. Did y'all know that? It might be a demon that came to church this morning, but don't you be afraid because God has given you power and authority. Amen. Watch what happens. They're in church and the man with the impure spirit is in church. Watch this. And the demon recognized who Jesus was. Did y'all catch that? The word says he cried out at the top of his voice. Go away. That's just like an evil spirit. Evil spirit don't want nothing good around them. Evil spirit don't want nobody happy around them. There are some people who get frustrated when you happy. Y'all missing what I'm saying. There are folk who can't handle God blessing you. That alone ought to make you run the church. All these blessings God give me, I don't care what kind of demon don't like what God is doing for me. God has been too good for me to sit on my rusty dusty like I did all of this by myself. Turn to your neighbor and say, look at the life you live, baby. You're not even worried about a roof over your head, but the demon man. You, you didn't went out and somebody winked at you and flirted. Don't you tell the wrong girlfriend. You tell somebody who ain't happy that somebody winked at you, girl. You know, all men are dogs. You ought to tell them, you ain't happy for me, boo. I mean, he said I had a nice outfit on and wink, I winked back. This is why negative people are dangerous. Because some of y'all get in relationships and then y'all start talking to folk who ain't never been happy. And it keep me hot. They're trying to cut me off. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If you're going through something, talk to somebody with a high spirit. Because if you talk to somebody whose spirit is lower than yours, they're only going to give you the perspective of that low frequency, which is going to cause you to make a move or a decision that you shouldn't have never made. But if you talk to somebody who has raised their frequency, it's going to cause you to go to another place, which means you can't stay there. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't stay there. You've been mad enough, boo. It's time to let it go. Just, just, just rock and shake your neighbor and say, I'm trying to get you out of whatever had you frustrated last week, whatever had you down and mad last week. If you were worried about how you were going to pay the bills, baby, let me testify to you that the Lord brought you to church this morning. If you were worried about a relationship and somebody who ain't doing right about you, let me preach to you this morning and tell you that God brought you through it anyway. If you were worried about what the doctor said about your appointment last week, let me tell you right now that the Lord is a healer. There is nothing that cannot be touched when you show up with the right kind of spirit. Fool around and get three people who got a good spirit and ten folk who got evil in them. I guarantee you that the three will begin to praise the Lord and make choice or rejoice with noise unto the Lord. And the ten people either got to leave, got to go, I gotta join the crowd. There is something about showing up with a good spirit. I'm almost where I want to be. I'm, I'm just about there. So somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus preaching that fame. And it's a demon in church. Everybody look around. Don't look at nobody in the eyes. Just look around. It's a demon 
don't know where the demon is. Ah, the demon is on your table. It's that bill. Somebody look at that demon. That demon, that demon. But watch what happens. Watch this. Um, Jesus didn't recognize the demon. The demon recognized Jesus. <laughs> Watch this. Verse number 34 says, the demon said, go away. What do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth. Not only did the demon know who Jesus was, the demon called Jesus by his name. And also said where he came from, where he lived. Can I preach to y'all the way I feel it? The enemy knows more about you than what you think. And the reason we can't never get ahead is because while you sleep, the enemy is doing his job. The enemy is causing trouble. I want to tell you this because I have learned this. Usually whenever two people have a dispute, it ain't the two people that's mad at each other that's the problem. It's usually somebody that threw the rock and hit their hand. We're going to expose some stuff this morning. Because there's a whole lot of people who got everything to say. Girlfriend, brother, be careful of the person who brings you a bone. Because I guarantee you, they're taking one back. You got to guard yourself around folk who don't love you the way God loves you. You got to guard yourself around folk who are always envious and jealous of you. It ain't your fault God gave you favor. It ain't your fault that God gave you something that it makes you uniquely special about you. It ain't your fault that you stand out like a sore thumb. There's something uniquely different about me. And I cannot keep living my life lowering myself so that you feel comfortable. Somebody shout out, it's time to make some folk uncomfortable. If the, truth be unto, the truth be told, if you start being who God created you to be, you will make some folk uncomfortable. Who you call yourself in this family? We ain't never had no millionaires in this family. I need somebody to say, but dang on it, I'm going to be the first. There's got to be somebody in church this morning that came out of a family who ain't never had a college degree. And there ought to be somebody to say, well, I'm going to be the first. There's got to be somebody in church who understands that I've got to break generational curse after curse after curse after curse because God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but God gave us power and authority and the difference in the life that you want to live and the life that you keep looking at from everybody else is you've got to learn how to operate in the authority that God gave you and that starts with checking your spirit. So, he's in church. The spirit recognizes him. Watch this. I know who you are, the Holy One of God, because they will never tell you personally you did good. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. Because you keep waiting for you keep waiting for somebody in your family to okay you. You did good. I'm so glad you graduated. You're the first one to graduate. Look at your name and say it ain't gonna happen. So if it ain't gonna happen, then what, Pastor? Um, watch this. Jesus said, shut up. I'm in verse 35. Then you know, look at your verse 35 and tell me what verse 30 said. Jesus said, shut up sternly. He actually said, be quiet. Stern. I'm going to start some arguments today. The next time you at home and somebody say, we can't afford it. Tell them, be quiet. Stern. I, 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 I want to I, I get a new car. I can't afford it. Be quiet. Stern. I, I'm about to get a new house. Be quiet. Stern. Ah! Jesus said, stern. Talking to the spirit. Come out of him. Watch this. Because Jesus recognized that he's only showing up because that spirit is the one who's taking the thought. So Jesus wasn't talking to the man. He was talking to the spirit that was in the man. 
and he looks at the man and talks to the spirit come out of him and then not the man but the demon threw the man down now when he throws the man down not a scratch happens to the man I'm getting ready to switch gears here. What are you saying, Pastor? Some of us have been possessed by other spirits, and we have gone through some hell in our life. But watch this. Not one scratch has been put on you. Every single time you have been thrown to the ground, God has brought you out. Look at your neighbor and say, every time you have gone through hell, God picked you up. Every time somebody standing your name, God picked you up. Every time somebody tried to kill you, God picked you up. And not one piece of scratch, all you got is a little nick on your knee to remind you that mama told you to stop hopping on the tree. And you did it one more time and busted your behind, but God picked you up. Is there anybody in church that can say, I got to praise God? Because every time... I just need an every time praise. Does anybody have an every time? They meant it for my evil, but every time. The doctor said I wouldn't make it, but every time. They tried to scandalize me. They tried to leave me for dead. And excuse me, y'all thinking I'm praising God because the music is good and because Reverend Jeffrey can sing so good and all of that is true. But there's about seven of y'all that you would have lost your mind had you left it to the church. But every time, every time, God makes a way. I got the clothes. So Jesus speaks to the spirit. Y'all stop trying to change people. They've been with them spirits a long time. And you think you can somebody. You, you, you can't change a spirit. And the difference in life is what will happen if we changed our spirit. See, you can be a losing team, but let that losing team catch the spirit. Wow. Have you ever Or somebody went in and took a hard charge or somebody got a steal and that changed the whole dynamics of what the team was going to do. What are you saying, preacher? I just need one person to praise God up in here. See, y'all think we need a whole bunch of folk. The Bible says when two or three are gathered in my name. some folk who got the right spirit. Do you got the right spirit to praise me? Do you got the right spirit to magnify me? Do you got the right spirit to show up? Do you got the right spirit to live? When you have the right spirit, God is always in the midst. <laughs> Somebody holler out every time. So watch this. The Bible says here that Jesus speaks to the spirit and the spirit throws the man down. Watch this. And then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. There's one more thing I gotta give you before you understand, before I leave here. Number one, you got to understand the power of your authority. Do you understand the power of your authority? How many of you have the power of your authority? Raise your hand if you got authority. What I want you to do is I want you to begin to exercise. I want you to pay attention to every time you speak a word that suggests you don't have. I want you to catch every time you speak a word that you don't have. I, I've been praying about uh, God, um, how, how we're going to build this church back uh, because of uh, the vision that God gives. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, that's going to cost some millions with an S. Just tell your neighbor, just tell them right now. Uh, millions with an S. Uh huh. And and uh, uh, brother Bailey, somebody asked me uh, this week. Uh, somebody asked me, brother Holiday, how much you think the church is gonna cost? And, and without knowing nothing, y'all, just ten million, just ten million came out of my mouth. I didn't know where it came from. I said, well, at least, Reverend Jeffrey, I, I know I ain't gonna come in no less than ten million. And it just flew out of my mouth. And, and, and somebody looked at me crazy, like, Pastor, do you hear what you just said? 
What they didn't know is I had been working on this sermon, and, and I was getting ready to change my mind. But, but you know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, that ain't even how much it's going to cost. It might be more than that. I said, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. I said, to me, it might be closer to 15 or 20 million. And, and the person said, Pastor, you have lost your mind. And, and then I started to praise God because I have learned in my life that when you decide to do something, that's when limitations get put in the way. But when you take yourself out of the equation and you realize that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I've got some good news and some bad news. The truth of the matter is, I have no idea how I'm going to make it. The truth of the matter is, I don't even know if I'm going to make it through the week. But I heard, I heard, I you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. And so let's go back to the man. The man ain't been himself. He's been depressed and taking pills. The man ain't know what it feels like to come to church and not be mad. I said the man don't know what it's like not to be mad at folks because all his life has been possessed uh, by a demon, uh, but aren't you glad, uh, I said aren't you glad, uh, that the demon uh, recognize uh, that Jesus uh, was in the house, uh, and because the Lord uh, was in the house, uh, he said, Master, uh, why are you coming for me? Uh, every demon uh, has got to flee, uh, every evil spirit uh, has got to get Change fly high. Why? Because everybody can't fly where you go. 
I got to go to work. I can't, I can't be floating down here. I got to soar like the eagle. I have to be what God has called me. I got to move like I know that God has a destiny over my life. God didn't call me to follow people all my life, but he called me to leadership. He's called me to step out on faith. I know that there's more. Touch and agree. God's people. Come on. High spirit. High spirit. Show up with the right spirit. Come on. I'm showing up different now. I can't. I can't show up like I don't know what time it is. I got to show up like I'm a winner. I got to show up like I'm ready. I got to show up because my spirit will affect everybody else's spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask for everything to pray for us as we prepare to close out. Every hand is bowed, every eye is closed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the words that you have given us today, the direction, the pathways. Thank you for the calling that you have put on our lives now. Thank you for everything that you would have be manifested in our lives now. Thank you that right now, God, you begin to move the spirit of fear away. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, God. Thank you that you have allowed us to walk up into this altar, God, with boldness and say, here I am, God. Fix it, here I am. Change it, God, here I am. Work the miracle you said you would. In the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, just open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you for it. Thank you for it, God. Thank you in advance, God. I'm, I'm thanking you for it in advance. I believe it, God. Thank you in advance. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, God. For this man of God that you have placed over this house, God, we say thank you. Bless him, God. Strengthen him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may walk back to your seats. Amen. Today in the Children's Church, we, uh, my name is Franklin, or Trey, but today in Children's Church, we talked about a lot, but we talked about how to be a leader, and ways to be a leader, and also, like, um, when's times that you are leaders, when's times you are followers. 
Uh, we talked a lot about what it's meant, what it means to be a leader because a lot of us play sports and so they're captains and part of being a captain is being a leader and not always following and always staying up for practice to get extra reps, coming early and leaving late. And so we basically just talked about how we can be leaders in our day-to-day -day lives and like what it's meant to be a leader and how it's an analogy of how uh, Jesus, he was a leader because he was called to be different. He didn't fit in and do what everybody else did. He was called to stand out. And so it was basically explaining how um, we could do that as well, how we're called to be different, not to fit in with the world, but to be outside of the world. Um, we also recognize that it's okay to be a follower as long as you're following in God's path and, and trusting that he will guide you through. And um, we said, um, ways that we're going to be a leader this week is in trusting in ourselves and staying on our focus and, and trusting in God will lead us in the correct way. Yeah. All right, give them a hand. Give them a hand. Now, young people, real quick, when we're getting out of here, all the young people stand up. Real quick, all my young people stand up. If you think you're young, stand up. Hey, Amen. Listen to me. From, from now moving forward, whenever even if you come up here a thousand times, whenever you come, say your name. The reason why I'm telling you to say that is because the world needs to hear your voice. And it's going to start here in church. But one day, your voice is going to mean so much to me. When I'm old and gray, I'm already gray. So I don't know how much grayer I can get. When I'm old and grayer, it's going to be your leadership and your voice and the decisions that you make that's going to make my world better. So make them know your name. Come on, praise God for the Lord next to you. The buses. My last day. All right. Somebody say mid-year. Mid -year. It's almost here. It's almost here. Listen to me, because I haven't pushed this and I and it charged to my head and not my heart. I've only missed this because of the transition that we have been in. But we have not asked you one. For budget. Two, we did not emphasize the seed offering that we sow in January. And so we're taking the entire month of, of January to make sure that every member of the church has an opportunity to give their New Year's seed offering. Look at your name and say, breathe. It's going to be all right. Amen. Number two, the budget is due. Amen. Amen. And officers, you know what we are supposed to do. Let us do. Pro Tim's, uh, Brother Grant, and Brother Bailey, what we are supposed to do so that we can continue to go. Lastly, our very own presiding elder will be preaching on that Thursday of the new year and up in Los Angeles, and we have a bus going. Amen. Please see Sister Mary Freeman is right here to make sure you reserve your seat. She'll give you all the information today. Just see her, even if you don't know what I'm talking about, go see her and say, what is he talking about? And she will tell you. Praise God for whom our blessings flow. Thank you. 